don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace family. Um, it's so nice to be with you guys this evening. Um, we, you know, listen, I'm very excited because um, I get to, you know, see two of my favorite people online at the same time. We got Dr. Susan Tata and Professor James Small, and we are going to talk about African leadership. Uh, but before we get started, you know, there's a you know, couple of things we got to do. First, let's just say shout out to everybody in the house. Um, I see Cheryl, Strawberry, uh, Jennifer. Nice to see you guys. So, um, and Sonia. Oh, so from Michigan. I tell you, Michigan's in the house. Um, you know, we today it was a um, a pretty cool day. Myself and Taki met up at the um, JPAC, and that's where right here. That's where the, the event is going down. The Happy Day of Black Excellence. So we met there today. We talked to the production crew. Uh, and, you know, just about how we kind of want things to unfold, and was getting really excited about you know, this big event, it's going to be really nice family. And if you have not gotten your tickets, I, I suggest you, you get them because, um, yeah, it, well, let me, let me rephrase it. I suggest you get your ticket today. If you are trying to be in the house, meaning if you're trying to, you know, if you live in the New York city area and you want to be at the JPAC center, make sure you get your tickets today. All right. We don't have any more vending spots. The VIP spots are gone. Uh, it, it's it's really um, selling quite nicely, and uh, everyone ex is excited. I was on Riza Islam's show um, today, and he talked about it. And his you know his his um, group of people are excited uh, for him coming on to the you know East Coast. So it's it's going to be a really nice event. Um, I'm going to actually uh, put up um, this. This is our new one. You know, we get one every every week. We're, we're showing us up the new. So you guys kind of have a little sneak preview of the one right here. Boogie Down Bronx. All right. So we have Dr. Ken Harris. He will be our host. And uh, if you guys have not seen the happy talks we did with Dr. Ken Harris and Dr. Tareen Wright about Booker T. Washington. Please, please, please put it in your queue, mark it, do whatever you have to. You've got to watch that show. Um, and in a lot of ways, that show is the foundation for the show that we're getting ready to do today. So please, if you have not seen that, watch, please watch it. But Dr. Ken Harris, he runs the National Business League that was founded by Booker T. Washington. He will be our host. He hosted our One Africa Power and Unity Conference in Detroit. He is hosting the Happy Black Day of Black Excellence. Also, we have Dr. Susan Tata, who is in the house. She will be in the house in, uh, in Queens. Riza Islam, Dr. Georgina Falou, Professor James Small, who's in here tonight, Infudishi Juhuti Miss, and Kaba Kabane. Now, if that was just the only thing we were doing, okay, you know, that's still a nice ticket, but no, no, no. <laughs> we also have Brand Nubian performing. We have J. Mar Milton performing, and we have a special, uh, some special poetry that will be uh, um, spoken from Lyrical Faith. Alongside with that, not only are we going to have like networking um, opportunities of, you know, for us to, um, you know, that's built into the schedule, but we're also going to, um, have um, a special, we're showing like special extended clips of our, our film, Hoppy, The Role of Economics in the Development of Civilization, and also Amadeus Christ, who will be in the house too. And this is nice because Professor James Small and Infudishi and I believe Kaba are in his film as well. He's going to show a special extended clip of his film. So this is going to be like a whole day of Black excellence. And it's important because with all the drama going out there with, you know, people saying this, people saying things that just don't make no, in, that don't make any sense. Like, you know, the ancient Egyptians uh, were not black. 
all that little crazy mess. This is a time for us to, you know, have a collective day where our African minds are all in one. We're looking at our the not only the excellence that we see in front of us, but we're also looking at the excellence that we have, um, you know, that is, um, you know, that is is inside of us because that's the only way we can really move this this movement forward is for us to recognize our excellence and then use it for our people. And so this you know this evening is is going to be really. Uh, it's, it's, it's a special evening. And I hope that, you know, if you are in the New York City area, that you are actually, you know, in the house. But if you cannot, it will be live streamed throughout the world. So you can get a ticket. I don't care where you where you are located. If you have Internet, you will be in the house for the day of black excellence. And it's nice because even, you know, uh, though you, you'll be on live stream, we're going to be showcasing everything. So you're not going to just. Um, you know, just see the, the speakers, you know, perform or stuff like that. No, 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 no. You'll get access to everything. We'll be in the lobby. We'll be everywhere. So it's, it's going to be a really uh, nice event. Now, if you want us to, because um, there's a lot of other things, um, you know, because, you know, this, our, our platform is about entrepreneurship. It's about building Black business, supporting Black business, and really moving us, you know, forward, uh, you know, from an economic standpoint. We also have sponsorship uh, opportunities available. So the cool thing about this is that all the sponsorship will be digital. Okay, so you could, you know, advertise your your website with us, but we're going to have a, a plain reel that will be planned throughout the conference at all the breaks. And so the live stream people will get it, which is worldwide, and the people that are in the house will see it. Also. Your uh, information can be on our Hoppy newsletter, you know, that goes out to about, you know, seven, eight thousand people every, um, you know, every week. We have that opportunity. And you can also have uh, your event be um, be part of um, our website. So we're going to you know put your website up there as well. So it's lots of opportunities for you to, you know, for sponsorship. And I have to tell you, you know, we had um, the spot. Oh, the vendors that we had at um, in um, in Detroit was really really nice. Like it was just a family affair. So family, if you want to do any type of sponsorship with us, and I guess I should put up this information so you guys can just you know go there right there. You know, um, it, it's happyfilm.com. Everything's right at happyfilm.com. Uh, excuse me, happyfilm.com. So you can sign up for the newsletter. You can get um, you know merchandise. You can buy your ticket for Hoppy. Day of Black Excellence, and you can also get um, you know information about sponsorship on HappyFilm.com. Now, speaking of our merchandise, you know, with, with this whole idea of uh, you know what happened in, in Egypt, and then we did the Power and Unity Conference in Detroit, we were moved to make new merchandise because you know, our, our, the merchandise we have now that you can still, we have a few of what we used to sell still available, but now we have uh, this idea of power and unity, right, too. And so if you look at the new merchandise here, okay, let me get up the model, let me write down there. Da, 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 da. There you go. It's nice. And we have hoodies. We got to make sure we get Professor James Wall a hoodie. He always looks nice in a hoodie. This is a nice kind of like bluish baby blue um, hoodie that we also sell. So, you know, you want to, you know, if you can support, get um, get your merchandise, wear your merchandise in the house. Uh, it, it's going to be a really, really uh, nice event. So um, I think that's it for now. You guys going to hear this again and again and again. But, um, you know, shout out to Lucio. And I have to tell you about him in, in the in the chat. He's Wolfman Lou. OK, this this brother right here will will text me links to stuff when things are going on, you know, e everything. So peace out to Lucio for doing that. Cheryl Penny, I see you, Sonia, in the house. Um, Manisha. All right, Gro and Brian. You know, Brian, me, me and Brian go back way back. You know, I see Brian up on Dr. Susan Tata's show, too, which is great. You love um, Deshaun. Nice to see you guys. All right. So uh, without further, yes, Sonia, you got to add this one. Let me show it again. Let me show it again. It's nice. It's the power in unity. It's like the official power in unity, um, you know, 
uh, t-shirt. Very, very nice. Very nice. So tonight I wore my fly girl earrings because another fly girl is going to be on the um, on the happy toss with me, Dr. Susan Tata. And so let me bring our our fellow. Um, yes, Lorenzo. What's up, Lorenzo? Peace to Lorenzo. Um, let me bring in Dr. Susan Tata. Hey, sis. And Professor James Small. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, we're good. Sister, I'm happy to see you and happy to see that beautiful smile on your face and those yeah. sweet eyes just glowing out to the world. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's so nice. And listen, Dr. Susan Tata, thank you, because this is the middle of the night where you're at. So I really appreciate it. No, it's, it's early morning. What time is it there? Actually, we have a 2.24 now, 2.24 a.m. I mean, like 30 minutes to 3 a.m. Oh, my God. But, you know, we crazy. don't sleep. <laughs> you know what? You're we right. We well, in the night. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, um, that's like the, um, that's the club hours, 3 o'clock. That's what's up. Peace to Ron in the house, Ron Spears. Um, so, you know, last week, uh, yeah, last week we had a really good conversation with Dr. Tareen Wright and um, brother uh, Dr. Ken Harris about Booker T. Washington. And, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages about that, you know, that uh, happy talks that we had. Because a lot of people just literally just didn't know this information about him. Um, and so this is sort of the what, what we're going to have this conversation about tonight is you know, Booker T. Washington was fighting for our liberation. And we've always been fighting for our liberation. We're fighting for our liberation right now. You know, uh, but we do want to kind of just talk about some of the um, the leaders that we've had in the past uh, and present and just kind of really, you know, have an analysis of of what they were able to do and um, and how we can really use that information to just kind of move forward. Um, so that's, that's the framework for tonight. And you, you two are very well versed in this. And I, I, listen, family, I have my notepad, <laughs> I have my pencil, I'm, I'm about to put on these glasses because I know you guys are about to, you know, be dropping some jewels, Dr. Susan Tata, professor. So professor, we, we're going to start with you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're very studious tonight. Yeah, because there was something I wanted to bring to four. Okay. Um, but we'll get to that. You know, there's this silliness, uh, the children of the invaders uh, oh. into Northeast Africa, uh, as silly children sometimes may be, when you can walk into the museum that you own after robbing my ancestor's grave and see the black bodies of all of the mummies that are royalty to Kemet and still run around and saying, these are your ancestors, instead of referring to your Turkish ancestors or your Serbian European ancestors or your Caucasus mountain ancestors, mm. you, because you've been living in my land as invaders for thousands of years, you actually, in your little silly childish mind, is dreaming that this is your land. One, see white Americans walking around North America ruling it every day. But we know white Americans are invaders in North America. They're invaders in the Caribbean. They're invaders in Central South America. Yes, and they're invaders in Northeast Africa. So sad to say to the world, the people of ancient Kemet was black, still are. They just live in the South. And you're still afraid of them because when we come, you want to know, are you disturbing the Nubians? Are you causing problem between the Nubians and the, 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 the Arabs? No, we don't have to. The ancestors will. Mm. It goes around, comes around. We will, uh, we had a song in, we used to sing in the streets in the 60s when we took over a building or took over a campus. And we would say, who would rule America? In this case, who will rule Kemet? Very few niggas, 
no crackers at all. Power to the mm-hmm. African people. So let the world understand, you don't frighten us. We are not intimidated by your childish foolishness. You practice genocide against my people and want me to view your genocide as scientific study. Now we got to stop pissing off to these people. I'm angry about what they did to happy all the way back in February. You told me not to be angry. The anger hasn't gone away. You told me not to be angry. You I told me to be cool it. and let those of us who had to be vicious be vicious. I didn't yes. need you doing that. You have enough on your plate. But we need to let the world understand. Shek unto Dieb and Theophil of Anger went to your major world conference. Prove to your scientists in the UN and everywhere else this is an African territory and these were African peoples. If you don't want to believe us, go to your own museums. Maybe the problem is you don't visit the museums or you don't visit the tombs. Everybody is painted brown and black in the tombs, by the way. All right. Mm-hmm. And the mummies are all black by the way. So visit the museum where your grave robbing scientists have taken my ancestors and abused them. And we don't like it. Yeah, they're actually so they're, they're, that up front. You understand? Because we need to be very clear. Yeah. I don't care if they shut us down for eternity, we will live again somewhere else. But we are not going to punk out to these people. Who do they think they are? You know, I remember when this, I first had an encounter, encounter with them in 87, and they arrested me in Egypt mm. and charged me with the same things that they were charging uh, Happy all the way back then. Wow. And then apologizing later that they were told to do this by the American government. So is it the American government telling them to do this now? because we've raised the contradiction to a higher level. And we're gonna raise the contradiction to an even higher level because something happy did last week when you took Booker Washington back from the abyss. That's always been my historical love piece. That's been my teacher in my brain from the time I was a child because I'm from South Carolina. And to see what Dr. Harris and Dr. Wright did in <coughs> presenting that extraordinary man yeah. to his people so that they can love him again, so he can live again. Because the things he talked about is what Malcolm X called black nationalism. Yeah. The things he talked about is what Nkrumah was trying to do in Ghana. And what Nelson Mandela was trying to do in South Africa. So how you dismiss them from history. And we have to stop letting people do that. You do not dismiss my ancestors. Even Moshe Dayan, how many people know Moshe Dayan? He was the Israeli general with the patch over his eyes. But he was an amateur archaeologist. And the last film piece I saw of Moshe Dayan, he had been digging around Israel looking for some white Israelis. But all he kept coming up with is black Egyptians. So (laughs) he just put his arms around these Egyptian statues that they hide in the museums in, in Israel. And said, so these are my ancestors. You was talking about the black statue he had, he had an hand around with an Egyptian headpiece on. Mm. Everybody know the truth, except the children that's playing around on the internet over in the Middle East, for whatever reason. The people, your scientists and your leaders need to tell you the truth. You're a guest in my house without an invitation. Okay? Mm. You disrespect my ancestors and they will fight you back. You think I'm a problem? No, you can kill me. They're the problem because you can no longer kill them. Yeah. Okay. So now we can get into talking about some other ancestors up in here, but I don't like nobody. They mess with Kevin Hart. Kevin is just a nice comedian. Kevin don't mean nobody no harm. Kevin loves the world. Kevin loves his people. And you're going to attack him because you don't have a history that you think is worthy, find out who Salahuddin's father was. Find out who Salahuddin's people was. Don't challenge me. I'm al Haj Amin Shahid. I've lived in your culture. I know your history. I've taught your religion. So you want to challenge me. Challenge your own leadership. Even the prophet will tell you who the Egyptian is. Read the Quran. Yeah. 
and you will come out a learned person. Stop just repeating a few prayers, and that's all you know. Read the book. Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, even to the ends of the earth, even as far as China. That's what your book tells you to do. It didn't tell you to look only in me. You know? So if you've got a problem with me, go to the Rabat Alim al-Islamim. They gave me my credentials. So I have rights that you don't have. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we posted this, you know, in support of, um, because that's what Kevin Hart said. So, you know, we yeah. we, we posted this and we've got all types of little interesting um, feedback on this. Yeah. Um, you and know, Kevin should reach out to some of us. If you don't yeah. know the history well enough, don't go challenge the devil because he's prepared for war. But he didn't challenge anybody. He just, no, he's. No, the yeah, minute you say like, this, you've challenged the devil. Oh, yeah, you will. Understand? And you know, if, you, yeah. if you're going to challenge the devil, then come to your warriors to be fully armed and given the proper armaments intellectually to go deal with these people. But you know what's interesting about that, Professor? It's I um I I, mm-hmm. I appreciate what you're saying. You know, but sometimes when you're saying something that you just know to be so true, you don't you don't even you don't even think that you're saying anything that's controversial because you're just like it's just regular knowledge. You know, I know, because but you we're know, supposed and, and, to know that we are yeah. at war. Yeah. The war is not over. They proved that last February when they attacked you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They're proving that now. They started attacking Kevin about a month or so ago in yeah. the media. So that tells you the war is not over. But it tells you also that we are very victorious because they have to jump up and scatter fight as they're doing. That we have created an enormous victory around the world. History is on our side. Um, their DNA test proves that <laughs> I was watching a program about a month ago or so, mm-hmm. and there's a white doctor, and they just done the DNA on a lot of the mummies. And he said that the royal families of Egypt were Africans. So if the royal family is African, don't tell me a bunch of white people were going to have the black people as their leaders. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where did that happen, right? You know? And then he says... We were all surprised. We were shocked. No one expected this. What tomb has he been living in for the last three or four centuries? Yeah, you know what? This it's it's really it's yeah it's 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 crazy the way that um you know this is going on. It's 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 crazy, but yeah. Um, thank you, um, Professor, for just setting the straight the record straight for those who didn't possibly know that the ancient Egyptians were black. I'm glad you set the the record straight. And we're not, you know, playing with this little nonsense. And most of them came from Congo and West Africa and mm-hmm. went to that Nile Valley when the Sahara dried up. And the, Sahara, the, the Nile Valley came into being after the Sahara had been for millennia. And so we moved east and some moved west to the Senegal River and to the Niger River and to the Congo River and into Cameroon. But many moved east to what became oh, the Nile Valley. And when the invasions came to that area, and I've been saying this for decades, I'm glad some of my young brothers are now researching it. When the invasion started with the Hittites and the Hyksos and the Assyrians and the Persians and the Greeks and the Romans, you know what we did? We went back home to the ancestral land. So if you go to places like Chad, you will see the tribe, the biggest tribe in Chad is called the Sa-Ra. You hear that name? The yeah. sa Bronze, okay? They're also in Cameroon and northern Cameroon, and they're also in northeastern Nigeria, okay? If you go to the people of Nigeria who call themselves the Ga, Adangbe, Kipi, they will, you will see on their boats symbols of Osiris and symbols of Kepra, okay? If you go to Togo, there's whole village, a whole town dedicated to just the deities we know, right? And in, 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 in the, um, what do we call our gods there? Um, brain freeze. What do you call them? The Netarus. The Netarus. Oh, oh yes. You, you come into the town, you think people are living in a house. No, the houses are there for the gods, dedicated to all these different gods. They brought from Kemet to Togo. And I could go on and on. And guess what? The West knows all about this. They're anthropologists, they're archaeologists, they know all of this stuff. And they've written tons of books on it. 
that they keep nice and quietly hidden in their libraries. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, but we know how to read too, in more languages than English. Yeah. So, so, that's, 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 <laughs> I, I, so I still don't think you're do, you're done, and we don't need you, we don't need for you to be done. That's why you're on happy talks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, so you know, let's just kind of um start with you know like this resistance, right? You know that um, you know some of our young people don't know that we we actually you know resisted. We've always been resisting things that were not in our um in our best um, you know that was not um, best for us. You know, our, our liberation, we were always fighting for our liberation. So can we just kind of talk a little bit about um, these Arab and uh, European enslavers and um, and what leaders arose during this time um, that are, you know, are, are mentioning, you know, taking, you know, or just which ones do we need to talk about? Like Queen, uh, Queen Azinga, um, who else, Professor Small? Because there's some that we need to be but, talking about. Because uh, we're going to start. Nana, Nana Yasantua and the Ashanti Nation. Mm -hmm. Nana, um, Queen Amanatu, who was in Nigeria, parts of Nigeria and parts of Cameroon. Um, was, um, there was a whole kingdom up there. Um, we need to talk about the people we call the Moors. I don't like that term because they call themselves the Gudamas and the Garamantis, who populated North Africa. Most of them never gave up to Islam. Many of them did convert to Islam and took over Islam and invaded Spain and set up the Moorish Empire there. But many of them ended up going to Cameroon, to Niger, to Mali, to Mauritania, to get away from the Arab Muslim invasion of North Africa. Um, and we had some, you know, extraordinary leaders. We could just take a, a bonsu. People like to talk, but oh, the Asante sold us in slavery. Well, there was an Asantehini, his name was Bansu, you know, and the Portuguese was dominating the African coast and the main slave dungeon um, was one called Elmina, which is yes. still there. And, 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 and the Bansu led the Ashanti army from Ashanti in the central part of what is now Ghana and wiped out the Portuguese at Elmina and drove them off of the coast of Ghana. But the, the building had no relevance to us. So once he had defeated them and driven them away, he took his army back up to Ashanti. Of course, the Dutch would then come and take over those facilities. And the British would come and take it from them years later. But we were at war with the Portuguese. We were at war with the Dutch. We were at war with the British. No one took people off of that continent easily. Mm. Had it not been for the wars and the defense of the people of Africa, they would have taken millions more of us. But it was us fighting, those who were left behind, who were beat down by colonialism because of their resistance to the tyranny and genocide of slavery. And we now look at them as though they were somehow involved. No, you involved in what? These were their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their brothers, their sisters, their children. How are you going to be involved in that? And if you were involved in any way, it was under duress because you were under military dominance from an invader with guns, something we did not have. But our rebellion, take a beautiful, this one brother, I love him. His name is Setuweya. Everybody should learn about Setuweya. How do you Setuweya. spell it? Don't ask me how to spell such a way. <laughs> how to spell it with the pronunciation, it'll come. Such, such a way. He's, okay. He's the king of the Zulu mm. after the death of, he's a couple of kings down after the death of Shaka. There was nobody named Shaka Zulu. There was a king of the Zulu named Shaka. All right. It is disrespectful to call him Shaka Zulu. That's white people stuff. Mm. The king of the Zulu whose name was Shaka. Well, one of the kings that followed him was Setuweya. And uh, let me see what year that was. You know, I'm like, I like to do notes and stuff, right? Uh, Setuweya took on the British in the 1800s at a battle 
um, is January 22nd, 1879, at a battle called Islambada. We need to study the battle called Islambada, Islambada in South Africa. 11 days after the British attacked the Zulu nation, they were met by 20,000 Zulu army strong who wiped out 2,000 British soldiers in one day and caused the collapse of the British government in London, which at that time was led by Rospeer. They'll tell us about Rospeer as the prime minister and the government falling, but they never tell you why that government fell. Where they fell because such a way of crushed the British army in South oh. Africa. We should name all our grandchildren such a way. Wow, such a way. You know okay. Such a way is, you know. But we don't know about such a way, you know. And we don't know about a king that would come after him named Bambata. King Bambata, also a king of the Zulu who would take on the British army and the might of the British army and slaughter thousands of them. But they defeated us after the battle that was won by Bambata by introducing something to the battlefield called the Gatling gun or the precursor to the machine gun that could kill a thousand people in an hour. We had never seen anything like that in warfare. Mm. And so we cease our fighting. Or we can go to one of my favorite brothers. People think because of his name, he was an Arab. His name was Muhammad Ahmed. He was the Mufti of Sudan, 1885. He takes again on the might of the British army, led by the most celebrated British general in the world at that time, Gordon, right? Who was a big hero back in Britain. Well, Gordon came into Khartoum, Sudan with 10,000 troops, and he sent them back up to Cairo with 300. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> like that, right? Not only did he send them back with 300, he put Gordon's head at, after he cut it off on a tray and send them back to the, the Sultan. Damn. The British would then go to China and bring in General Kitchener, their, their suicidal man, their genocide man, to then fight Ahmed. But he couldn't huh. defeat Ahmed, they had to have a collaborator and a traitor poison our brother. But we should never forget Muhammad Ahmed, the leader of the Sudan. You know? um, and okay. that he takes on the might of the British and the Turkish Ottoman armies that was trying to invade our land. Mm. So you know what? Let me um let me just uh, get to Dr. Susan Tata in on this. Um sister sister Tata. When we um, when we're looking at this idea of like leadership, okay, and what makes um, a powerful leader, what are some things that you believe that make a a powerful leader? Can did you you hear me? Just, I know Dr. Susan Tata's internet's a little shaky. Yes, yeah, she's having some difficulties. Yeah. Um, with that internet thing. Yeah, I tell you, this is internet. Oh, right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we yes, can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. I really want to thank uh, the this global audience that is gathering here. And I can see most of my Pan African Daily TV followers yes. in the house. As this, you know, they, they, they just understand the purpose of leadership. Um, being on the Pan-African Daily TV and being here as well. And um, yes, and to you, uh, my global family, happy. I want to thank you for giving me the honor and the privilege to share the space with a great professor. I mean, this is what I see as a characteristic of a leader. Uh, professor tells us about the leadership of the past and um, I think we have to recognize the leadership of the present, which is what I would share, um, depending on my experiences on the Pan-African Daily TV, the kind of great leadership that I've seen. I've seen fearlessness, I've seen resilience, I've mm -hmm. seen um, the, the, this outspoken without fear. 
And if you ask me who a great leader or the characteristics, I would show you Professor James Small. I would show you um, Sister Felicia Happy. I would show you Dr. Susan Tata. I would show you Cheryl. I would show you Ayoka F1. I mean, I would show you all the audience that is um, actually, you know, on this show tonight and those that would watch it. Why am I saying that the present leaders? Because, I mean, we, we just don't want to distinguish between the political leadership that we have on the continent or in the diaspora, but we want to talk, we want to feel the spirit of fearlessness and resistance and, and being intentional from this day-to-day -day leadership that we have among us. And I think that's a very um, a precious step for us to take. If we want to emulate these great kings and these great queens that we're talking about, I think the first thing is for us to actually portray that black excellence, which is what um, we we would be celebrating on February 4th. And, and so a characteristics of a leader is buying your ticket, for instance, to be on the black excellence. The characteristics of a leader is attending the conference itself. I think there's some things that we speak uh, on. It becomes a little bit like on practical. If I give a characteristics to something and I'm not showing that thing, I can only just dream about it and, and, and know that these things exist from books, from definitions, from experiences. But I think the leadership that we are seeing today and that we have the privilege actually to, to experience um, is the leadership that is doing it right now. I have never, to be honest with you, um, met this, this kind of fearlessness that we have. I mean, from, from, from all that I've hosted, and uh, like I'm saying, I want to speak about the one that I see in front of me, because we're not going to be repeating things like things that were write, written in the Bible or in the books, and we cannot really identify to them. I think we would like to speak about the leadership that we see, we have, we can touch, we can feel, we can listen, we can see in action. And like I say, if I take Baba Smalls, if I take uh, Baba Leona Jefferson, Mama Rosaline, Professor Baina Bello, uh, Felicia Happy, Taggy, or all of them that we've seen, this is a leadership that is tangible. I can touch them. I can feel them. I can see their work. It, 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 tomorrow, the, the, the past or the future is going to be talking about us as this leadership. And if these characteristics of this kind of leadership doesn't move me to be in my royalty, to be in the place that belongs to me, to be the Egyptian, I will not go around telling people that I am an Egyptian. I would, they would just see it in me. They would feel the royalty in me, mm. like we feel it in Professor James today. Uh, they, they would not just hear. So this present leadership, as I see, even on the continent, in terms of political, in terms of our royals, in terms of all the conscious community that we're building here, um, is exactly what this great leaderships of the past is bringing into, into our memory. It means it's like Professor James usually said, when, when you give birth to your children, you've given birth to yourself. And so I think this leadership actually gave birth to the prophecies that we have today. And the prophecies are giving birth to us. Let's just say we are still the babies because I'm learning a lot like you. We're reading a lot. But now we're not just reading and not being able to ask questions and not being able to be in the space. So for me, characteristics of a leadership that I see is someone that takes action. Mm, it's okay. not just being a leader by um, uh, too much. Yes, the knowledge is there, but I am going to meet face to face with Professor James Small and all this great leadership at the Black Excellence on the 4th of February. Now, the leadership is going to be determined by how many people are buying this ticket. And so when we say we lead, we are doing the example. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that is leadership. We studied all sort of leadership in terms of books and in terms of what this 
colonial education taught us. But I think the black leadership had to do a lot with action. So like we see our warriors went to war. We saw the queens taking care of their communities. We saw how our children were raised. You know, we, 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 we could feel it. I never would go to read about leadership. The Global Pan-African Daily TV family, Happy Family, all the conscious community that we're building today, every one of us is a great leader by the actions that we're taking. And I think in, in, in Kemet or in Egypt or the Africans that we are, the Egyptians that we are, it's actually about building the pyramid, raising their families, putting the communities into action, putting the societies, putting, I mean, just doing the work that is leadership. And so I don't, I don't actually know how I can say, I can only encourage each and every one of you that is watching us that to be a great leader, you have to be on the ground. You have to take the action, be fearless. Today, our professors are going to take a lot of bullets because of the wisdom, the action that they are taking to put us on the front line. They have built us into that fearless weapons that are untouchable and until people are so scared of us, even when we are nothing. So I think this leadership, we want to see it on the 4th of February. If you are here watching and listening to me, please, and you want to be in that space where you want to touch us, feel us, get the power to act, get your tickets and be at the Black Excellence in New York or be nowhere. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Um, Tata. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Tata, that, that was excellent on point. Susan and I did have a conversation last night and she said, you speak about the ancient days, I'm gonna speak about the contemporary now. And I think that was so appropriately uh, done. I was looking at Susan, um, what are some of the qualities that we just asked, what are the basic qualities of a leader? And you covered most of them and they come out like hardworking. You work for what is good for you and your kind, open-minded, uh, empathetic, visionary, confident, honorable, ethical, positive, humble, communicative, and decisive of some of the qualities, all of which I see in the two queens that are sitting before me. I've worked with both of you for nearly two or more years now, um, watching you try to educate the African world to break the mental chains so people can think, so that they can see what's right in front of them. That's what the body wisdom does. It gives you an opportunity to, to, to see what you're looking at. Um, oftentimes people are looking at the solution to the problem, but they can't see it because someone else is interpreting how the things should work. When you are able to look and see how your ancestors interpret it and how your contemporary commentaries in media as the you two are interpreted, that allow the people to free, them, free themselves, to see themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a student now who I know is online and she tells every day I hear, I have to tell her, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you. Cause he's constantly talking about how I now know myself. Mm -hmm. I can feel myself. I can see myself mm. and working to make a better myself. Because when you make the better myself, we make the better African self. Yeah. This is yeah. It's yeah. constantly mm. one African. Yeah. And I remember when Pan African Daily TV first started talking about the One Africa, and then the Happy started talking about the One Africa. It scared the hell out of the world. Just that little term. We had only talked about it, but that term told them that you were in your teachings suggesting to the world that we belong to one another, and that's that no nothing else and a great leader will teach us how to love ourselves so we can love each other yes yes, you know? yes. 
Yes, that's what the day of Black mm -hmm. Excellence is about. It's, yes. a, it's, you know, it's the same thing that happened, you know, in Detroit. You know, you just felt better just being in that space. And even people in the live stream felt it, you yeah, know. And people went home with that knowledge. You went and home. And we began to apply it. I've heard yeah. all over the country, Sister Tata, my plane, I took my plane late. I was supposed to come in the day before. And I came in the next day and I missed you. But I have heard from people all over the United States. Yes. With the extraordinary presentation of Susan Tata. Yeah. You rocked people's world. Yeah. They saw so Africa yeah. in a way that yeah. wasn't real to them before. But they look at you. You look just like them. You talk just like them. But you presented Africa to them. Mm -hmm. and, and it just moved barriers out of people's way. So all I can hear when I ask about Detroit, Susan Tata, Susan yeah. Tata. And they're like, oh, well, what yeah. did this Susan Tata have to say? Whatever you said, people loved it. Because she looked like us. You. She was on that screen and she looked like us. Mm -hmm. You know, she looked like us. It was like looking in a mirror. I don't know how. And even afterwards, after I talked to her, she didn't even know how. Look, I'm talking about you like you're not even there, to, um, Dr. Tata. But it's like, even after I talked to her afterwards, she didn't know how it, it, it she didn't know how it happened because she just let, she let the ancestors take over. And literally I was still, I mean, and I looked around and there was a, just tears was running out everyone's face and I'm screaming. I was like, you know, I look like you, like we are the same. And I think, and if I was someone who was trying to take down somebody or whatever, I would not want that, that what was happening in that auditorium and on live stream, I would not want that to get out because it was so powerful. Everyone felt like one, like everyone felt like one. It was really, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was breathtaking. Yeah, I see people in the comments saying it. Yeah. No, yeah, it was breathtaking. It, it, it's still talked about, Sister Susan, after all of this time. So I'm so looking forward. And most people don't know, we have never met physically. All this time, we've known each other. We've worked together. We always somehow were not able to see each other. So on the 4th of February, if the ancestors and the divine uh, have chosen, I will see and put my arms around my sister and kiss her on her forehead and hold her hands and laugh and, oh. and, and know that this warrior queen who, and we got to appreciate, she's in Germany. We think America is rough on black folks. Y'all have never been to Germany. Yeah. Yeah. And this child is in Germany expressing her African essence. You so know you the kind of psycho spiritual intellectual maneuvering one has to do in order to be able to have a continuum because if you can't be there to teach your people you're useless so you have to make the compromise you need to make you have to make the adjustments you need to make you have to put and organize with the right people in order to be there because if you're not there to teach them they won't get taught and that's important for some critics to understand when they see us out here, you have to be able to say, I will be there for you and you have to mean it because you will figure a way to do that. Yeah. And Susan Tata has done that better than anybody I've seen. Yeah. So yeah. You are one of my great leaders, but I'm supposed to deal with the ancient leaders. You deal with the contemporary ones. Well, you know, that's my next question. <laughs> That's my next question. Can we, so, so in, um, you know, with everything that's going on in the United States, okay, can one of you guys or both of you guys talk about how was, how was the communication between Africa and the United States happening in terms of, of Black folks? Because it seemed like we were all on one accord, but was that by design or like what was happening? Like right. in the, um, right. Like in the 50s, the 60s? No, like I got to go back further than that. We got to go back. Okay, we have, let's, we, let's we go never back. really lost our link to Africa. That's been one of the myths that mm. our enemies have constantly put forward. I learned from my root woman, grandmother, 
that I was an African and that we came from Africa. Why? Because her mama came from Sierra Leone and her daddy came from Uganda. And so I'm only like two generations removed from being born on that continent. My grandmother was born here, her daughter, my mother, and myself. So three generations, I would have been born at home. I would have been among the Mendes, or I would have been among the Tutsis. Those are my people. And But I knew that as a young man, and that helped inspired me to go find Africa. Got to get there, got to go there, got to see there, got to be there kind of thing. But I want to bring up one brother leader to show you that we were never lost. His name is Martin Delaney. He was an abolitionist. He was a journalist. He was a physician, the first black to graduate from Harvard University Medical School. He was a soldier, a major in the American army during the revolution. But before that, his grandfather came to Africa from Nigeria, a place called Aviokuta. I know you know Aviokuta, uh, Susan. And so Aviokuta yes. is one of those heavy ancestral spots in the present day Nigeria. And so he went back to Abiyakuta. He led an expedition and they formed an organization called the Niger Delta Corporation. What was the purpose? To take all of us back home. And Abiyakuta and the people of the Yoruba land gave him land to bring us back from America. But when he comes back to America, the American Civil War breaks out. So he figured maybe this is the way to free my people. So he joined the American army and become the first American, I mean African field officer in the United States Army, rising to the ranks of Major Martin Delaney. How many of our youngsters know this man? Know this man who was leading the Back to Africa movement before our great father Marcus Garvey was born? You know, he did more to send our people home to Sierra Leone and Liberia than anyone in the United States after the Civil War in America was over when he realized even though we fought the war, people are still being oppressed. And so he said, then go home. You know, an extraordinary African, you know, a medical school graduate. On the day they were supposed to graduate from medical school, the white students at Harvard University said, we'll not march with the blacks. You know, they called us by the N word. And so him and the three other black men had to march alone because the whites would not march with them as a part of the medical class. But we didn't give up. They still came out doctors trained in the medical sciences. And with all of that in America, he still knew my home is Abiyakuta. Abiyakuta, that's my ancestor. That's where I belong. Let me go there and ask them to make a place for the rest of my people. So we never give up. I'm going to talk about another brother in a minute. 1892. 1892. T. Thomas Fortune and a group of black women from Rochester, New York, founded an organization. Malcolm X's father isn't born yet. What is the name of the organization? The Afro-American League. Did we forget home? No, never. 1779 in Boston, Massachusetts, Prince Hall and 16 other brothers founded an association called the Free African Lodge. We never forgot home, never. Mm. They want mm. to tell the world, oh, we forgot everything. Oh, we lost our culture. That's never been true in our history. Mm. Decade after decade, we name an institution. The first Baptist church in South Carolina is called what? In 1749, even before the AME church, the African Baptist Church. It still exists mm. just north of Charleston, South Carolina today. Mm -hmm. We never forgot who we were. Mm. That's a myth. Yeah. I come from the bush and the village. My village in South Carolina was no different than the villages I met in Africa. Mm. Mm. Yes, Baba. I share. Mm. Hmm. You want to add on to that, Dr. Susan Tata? About we um, Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Um, it's, it's, you know, each time this, this should bring, I don't know how I really can, can put this. It, because that's the more reason why we need to love ourselves so much. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about the 1719s, the 14th centuries, and, and, and I like I'm in the present, I'm in the contemporary, and I hear all this, and I feel it, and I can see it. I have too much respect. I don't even know what to say. For the past months that I was in America, and I look at the whole civilization, and I wept a lot, and I said, this is the handwork of my people, of my ancestors. And I look at people who have no knowledge, thinking that they own all the privileges and so foolish and selfish, mm -hmm. and also have been corrupted in the system to only look them at like, how can they, how dare you even, if it is not too much ignorance. You know, when I, I spend the little time that I spend in the US each time I go, I'm talking to the African migrant community yeah. because there's a lot of division and it is done purposely. Mm -hmm. Even here in Germany, I've said it a couple of times on the Pan African Daily. Every privilege that Africans in Europe or elsewhere out of Africa I enjoy is because of the African American. There is, there, there is no way we would ever deny it. Like I said, I try to simplify things to the day-to-day -day life so that we can be in the present and we can feel it. Because all the privileges that we, the migrant communities, even in Germany, I give you an example. When I had to travel, I have my um, physician or a house doctor, and he knows me from the beginning. All my children were birthed through him here in Germany. But the day I mentioned to him that my siblings were African-Americans, from that day, his tone changed, the way he looks at me changed, the way he speaks to me changed, I mean, like, if I get into his office, he, was, he would stand up. And he started to try to identify, to speak some kind of English. Like, he wants to be a part. And so, if we don't begin, first of all, by showing that recognition to the African Americans. I talk to my juniors every day. Then. Now they're happy. Oh, we have a blue passport, an American passport. They're doing businesses out there. They're doing very well. You talk to all the nurses that are coming from the continent or, and I speak to them on a daily basis. It is so sad that none of them, I think I can barely count, even know the history of their siblings out there. Mm. This community is so divided. The time that I was there, I had to take my niece, take my brother and my sister's kid to Muhammad Ali Center, practically on daily basis in Lovo. And they've been in Lovo, they have their business there, they've raised children out there in Kentucky, but they have never been to one of the centers that were created by you. So there is when we are talking about Africa and we're talking about and we see it just like the continent and its people I think respect has to start by us tapping our backs and saying yes we did it we did it up to now and so uh, the first nation notion was trying to research about you know uh, um, my siblings and their history and everything that they built and I started just a week and I gave it up because at the end of the day, I realized everything, every little single thing that I was researching gave me the same answers to what professors have been talking about. And so why do I need to go on reading books instead of just paying that allegiance and just giving that honor? And now if I have the privilege to teach my own, 
They have no clue what African Americans are. They don't even know anything. Most of them are even stereotyped in the same foolishness of thinking that, you know, they are aggressive, they are um, lazy, or they don't go to school, or they do this. You know, this kind of interviews that I did only got me, at, 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 in the beginning, I would have been very annoyed. But then I came down to realize the amount of destruction that has been done among us that we don't even know each other. Mm -hmm. Even as we look alike, even as we dress alike. And, and, and for an African migrant, I say this and I'm going to say it all the time, even in Germany, the moment they realize, Germans realize that you have a relative that is African-American, you're automatically treated differently. You're always treated differently. So what does that mean to me? It just means that the whole white system understands where the truth is. And because the African-American is somebody you cannot lie to them, the Africans on the continent or the migrant community are still looking at the West as if it's a heaven or something. And, and when they start, today we're talking about, oh, how our ancestors sold us into colonization. I say, no. The moment we start to respect and to honor and to appreciate one another, and it starts by me just enjoying the privilege that your ancestors, you worked for, you labored for, you were killed for. And if I can get that just by somebody looking at me and thinking I am an African-American, a white German, an Italian, a Spanian, or, you know, a Turkish, just looking at me. The day I had to travel to the Detroit conference and I was sidelined, all sort of things anyway, I just considered that as a, the, the road my ancestors wanted. Three times I went to the airport and this lady kept telling me, do you have an African-American, do you have an American passport? And I said, what do I need it for? What do I need it for? You know, you see, you see the level of respect. Yes, we can say everything, but I'm, I'm talking out of the box of somebody that never knew the importance of who my siblings are. Never knew uh, their work, their level. And I had to know it by the way people treat me because they feel I am one of you. And so I begin to imagine if Africa would understand the essence, the value of its children that you are. If we would just know for a single minute, like I don't even understand what I said in Detroit that brought tears to people, but I think I was just expressing or through my ancestors, that kind of deep respect that I just love to be where you are. I just love to be a part of that journey that you went through. I just love to want to say, how can I do to be that? And, and seeing Felicia, seeing all of you and, and hearing Professor James Moore million times tell me, oh, you are doing great. Oh, you are doing this. And this is somebody I look like they are my gods. I look at you, the children that were kidnapped, but that are doing such kind of great things i feel so small but that smallness doesn't make me not a great leader that smallness puts me into a spot where i have to appreciate and to teach really the love of standing up for what you believe because you african americans our siblings out there you have taught the world and taught us even africans what it means to die for one another if today we're talking about those that that the Af the, the ancient chemists that we are, you have proven it beyond all measures. Even to today, when we are on the Pan African Daily, I mean, the kind of respect. I don't think, Prof. Even when you went to Africa, that people actually would would, would have seen that as like, 
because we look alike, but when you speak now from your accent, you know, the first thing that made me so happy on the Pan-African Daily when I had Professor James Moore, and I think I also have to remind it's just that the first channel was, was brought down. And, and so we don't, we, we don't have those videos. But Professor said something. And then I looked at him, and then I imagined me on the continent, and I look at the grandfathers in the community who cannot read and write. And I look at him in that image of an African God that speaks with such intellect. And, 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 you know, it's, I don't know how to express it. Each time I'm so moved, I'm emotional about it. I cry most of the time because in our villages on the continent or in our communities, we look at our elders, particularly with the, with the mind damage that we're into it. And we, we respect them out of the rule of, uh, of nature that we are like. But can you imagine how many of us migrant, when we come here, we think that we have seen something extraordinary and we begin to believe to our people and we begin to want them to come here so that they can feel the civilization. And that's the ignorance of that disrespect. And when I saw it in Professor James Moore, in Dr. Wade Nobles, in uh, uh, Dr. Obati Shaka, in all of them, you know, that intelligence. And at that age, I've never seen a grandfather or, or an elder that speak with such knowledge. So I think if we owe anything, and, and that's why I'm going after to, uh, the, the leadership, the modern leadership on the continent to say, it's too much ignorance. Please pardon us really pardon us because the, the the damage that they did when they took you as to say it away from us they did the same damage to us Absolutely. they came back and finally and really colonized us in such a way that you see me i see you and we don't identify i call you african-american you call me africans on the continent and we call what is that crazy state of mind is what we must fight to keep that unity alive. It is mm. not possible that Felicia, you look like me, you talk like me, we've gone through a lot together, but yet I will still call you something else. No, it is too much. So it's a matter of respect and humility. And I will continue to apologize on the behalf of our foolishness and our leaders. And I teach everyone, my sons, my siblings, my followers to continue to pray for you and to apologize all the time. Because that's, I think, that recognition is what we really need from the continent. And also to agree that we were all foolish and that we as really foolish, okay? And so my coming to, 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 the, uh, uh, to, to New York is still on that same motive to say, we must go down and wash your feet. Mm. 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 You know, let me tell you, I, 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 thank you. Thank you, uh, Susan Tata. Um, you know, that, that admiration that you feel for us, we feel for you. And when I see, you know, this foolishness that you're talking about, you know, I see it too um, happening. And I, you know, it's like we are spending way too much time in that foolishness because we have work to do. And you're saying, you know, um, you just go drink your water and mind your African business. You know, that African business is what we need to lean into. We need to lean into that, you know, because it's as much as, as, um, as you um, so eloquently said, you know, how you appreciate us. We appreciate you too. Every time I come home to Africa, you know, I was in uh, Senegal last, Sen Senegal, I think, no, last year, or maybe the year before last. And as soon as I got there, I was just, it's like home. It's like family, you know, um, that feeling it's, you know, so I, you know, all the little foolishness, all the foolish people out there, they need to travel. They need to travel because when you, you know, put your foot on earth, <laughs> yes. you know, when you, when you, when you come to these spaces, it's a whole different, um, you know, things are, you just, you're overcome with, you know, with feelings, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Um, okay. uh, I couldn't let you be the only one with some mud cloth on tonight. You know what? Really, Professor? Um, I, had to, I had to go and get my mud cloth. Do I have to go get mine now? You, I, no, now I have to go get mine. Not. Susan, <laughs> she's flashing some serious mud cloth up there tonight. 
<laughs> I know. Yo, like, let me tell you, that's one thing. Listen, if you guys don't even want to come to the Happy Day of Black Excellence, just come so you can see Dr. Susan Tata's outfits. How about that? Just, yes. just come to see her outfits. Because even her little outfits she has, like, every time I sign on to her show and I see her, I'm like, damn, she must have one hell of a closet. But yes. <laughs> Family, please, you know, um, tune in. I want to say a special shout out here, right here to um, Mr. Felder. I think this is Billy Felder. Felder. He was the first person to actually buy one of the, let me just model it again before I get my mud cloth, poppy t-shirts. He was like the first one. He's a um, mm -hmm. good, good guy. Uh, he's always uh, supporting us um, at the African Street Festival everywhere. So um, peace to uh, Mr. Felder. And I, I want to say a special shout out to uh, Michael Imhotep is in the house. Um, he's um, uh, King Simon is hitting me up on um, King Simon. Is, it, he's actually in a nice uh, sunny area right now, <laughs> but he gave, mm -hmm. uh, he gave us a shout out. Yeah, he's he's giving us a shout out. And also Michael Friend, peace to um, peace to you guys. So. Man, you know what, Dr. Susan Tata, after you talk, you make us don't want to say nothing. <laughs> I mean, Susan, what Susan just touched on <laughs> is what true leadership is really yeah. all about. Yes. Um, Susan and I really met because I made a very stinging criticism in an hour and a half long speech on 125th Street. And then somebody took three minutes of it and circulated it first starting in Ghana. And I have to assume who they were, you know, our, our special government people. At the time, I was doing some stuff in Ghana, and I think they wanted to waylay it. And they were able to do it. They were able to stop the financial project I was working on by circulating this two or three minute criticism I was making of some African brothers on 125th Street, who I was trying to get to join with Brother Jack and Brother Felder and them into organizing this business association of the vendors so they can fight against the police abusing them. And um, they, Susan, right after that, I came on Susan's show and I actually made an apology to anybody whose feelings was hurt. But at the same time, I felt that a lot of what I said was right, it was the truth, because many of our brothers and sisters on the continent told me, don't you dare apologize. We need to really raise these contradictions but the contradictions are not out of maliciousness. We know now the contradictions is out of orientation by the State Department, orientation by the Refugee Committee in this country, um, the social orientation by the social services networks in this country, which is run by white people. And they do not want, I have a professor who was um, a professor at City University, um, Professor Kumanuweri who is from Uganda, and he's married to a beautiful queen, Sister Carolyn. Uh, they're my elders from South Carolina. And when he came to Columbia University as a student, I see girl, I went and broke out her mud cloth. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Susan. Um, and so when Professor Kuman Murray came to this country, along with many other students from Uganda and Nigeria and Cameroon and others who were in school at Columbia, the one thing they told them not to do is to go to Harlem have nothing to do with the African-American population. And so they had to sneak out of their dorms at night to come to Harlem to meet their own people. And he found his queen. And I've been married nearly 60 years now, Sister Carolyn, who I see even if just once a year, she's at Malcolm X graveside with me every single year. Mm. Um, he was my professor. He was also the Ugandan ambassador to Germany for a long while and to the Vatican. And then he was the Ugandan ambassador to Central South America and the United States for a long time. And I say that to say that the orientation they give our people didn't just start, Susan, with this generation. They were doing it mm -hmm. with the generation before, keeping us divided. Um, don't associate with them. Don't. They'll get you in trouble. You'll, you'll do this and this. And then our people being ignorant of our brothers and sisters from Africa, we then have our ignorant commentary towards the brothers and sisters from home, calling exactly. them ugly names and negative names exactly. and not venturing into their communities. You know, so I tried my best to solve that problem when I was at City College that I owe, and I, most people think of me as Professor Small, 
But I started out as an adjunct professor who, because I carried a full professor's role and they couldn't pay me, you know, you have to have a line. So when you're teaching, they call it having a line. And that line has a salary attached to it. Well, you can't use that line unless you credentialize the receiver of the money. So that's how I would become Professor Small, even though I'm a full-time administrator at the college. I had a budget of $2 million and a staff of 60 people. My staff bigger than the president, my budget bigger than the president. So I had real power. Okay? And, and what I did was open up the campus to African traditional organizations. So the Liberian organization was able to meet there. The Nigerian organization was able to meet there. The Ga organization met there. The Ashanti organization met there. The Airway organization for years, which allowed me and Dr. Jeffries and others to immerse ourselves in African culture because they weren't mm. meeting, they were being maintaining their cultural continuity, even though they were in a new geographical location. So we would go to the mm. Homawa celebration. We would go to different festival celebrations. We would go to weddings and namings and funerals and celebrate just as we would do if we were in the continent. And we did that all up at City College. We actually brought the mm. king of the Asante nation to City College, the first African king that came to this country after the enslaving process. And he was Otumfo Pokowari, the Asante Hini of the Asante nation. And we had the first African Durba in um, the history of America with 10,000 people at City College, you know, hmm. in that time. So we were putting up a fight. And, and the enemy told our people that we were the enemy, not to even associate with us. And it got so mm. bad that the Asante Hini sent a, I don't want to say a squad, but some people to America to literally arrest me and Dr. Jeffries because they'd been told by the whites that we would endanger the life of the king deliberately. And we had a traditional inquiry, I don't want to call it a trial, in a private place that we had been trapped, right? Mm -hmm. and, and one of my beautiful teachers, Bafo Kutu, who was the, the linguist for Santa Heni, oversaw the process. The same Bafo Kutu who led the military resistance against Kwame Nkrumah and spent 15 years in prison as a result. Wow. But when it was over, we were father and son. You see, huh. because we got to meet each other in our own privacy and have a discussion about who we were to one another. And we were able to take the enemy's divisions and set it aside out of our way. You know? Yeah, yeah that's so, beautiful. Yeah, the, what Susan has encountered, I know what she encountered. I've encountered that on the other side, but I didn't run away. I, me and Dr. Jeffries and my comrades, we have a million dollar hotel in Ghana for 18 years. Most of the money we ever made was stolen away from us. But that's okay. Par for the course. I should have been there managing my own damn business and I would have lost the money. But you cannot put a, hundreds of thousands of dollars of temptation in front of people with no oversight. And there are people coming out of poverty in poverty situations. But it didn't sour my heart on my home. That's my home. That's my land. That's my people. That's my family. That's my spirit. Mm. I will die in need one of those mm. brothers or sisters. Mm. Mm. Okay. We yes. still have our hotel, right? And I'm still over yeah. here. And it's being run by my beautiful brother, Kwesi Sego, right now. He said he had a wonderful Christmas. They made a lot of money, which is good. The place has been painted beautifully and newly, you know. So because we understand the contradiction the enemy have put us in. And those of us who call ourselves leaders of our people must be clear in our understanding of the contradiction that put us in. So that, that yes, term yes. I use, uh, Susan, look on me. Look on me. You belong mm -hmm. to me and I belong to you. And no contradiction can come between that statement. I share. Nothing, <laughs> you know? You know, I think that's, Nothing. yeah, I feel like that's, um, you know, 
we, we need those, we need more of those meetings where we're meeting together and where we're mm -hmm. having our private conversations because, uh, you know, that way there's no, and that's one of the things that I, I you know, I'm going to bring up um, uh, Bob and Booker T. Washington one more time, you know, about this, the secret societies that I, I think you and uh, actually Professor, um, I mean, uh, Dr. Jeffries also came on and talked about these secret societies, but this idea of us meeting, you know, in private and, and, you know, and establishing this is how it's going to go down, right? You know, and then being, you know, maybe perhaps a different way when people just see me on the outside <laughs> that's needed so that we can move forward, you know? Well, um, let, let me uh -huh. explain something to erase another myth. African secret societies have not died. Susan come from Cameroon. Some of our strongest societies of secrets are secret in Cameroon for both men and women in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, in Ghana, in Chad. Even today, we may not have the power we had in the past, but we're still struggling to be, okay? And, and mm -hmm. how I got introduced to African secret society was not through Dr. Ben, who I would later team up with in the craft, I got introduced to African Secret Society by the president of Chad, Tumpo Baibai, who was assassinated by the enemy back in about the 74, they killed Tumpo Baibai and overthrew the government of the Sara in Chad. And because I had done an assistance to, it all started with having a dream. You know, we Africans, we have our juju, right? And I believe in it. Because it too. is our magic, it's our universal magic when we're on par with our ma'a. And so I had a dream about a stranger who was the president of an African nation that I had never been to and a president I had never met, had not even heard his name. But he came to me in my dream. So I went to my teacher. I was studying under Hogun Rulax, Maryland, the craft of voodoo. And it turns out that my Hogan brother was the treasurer of Chad. And he told me this president I was talking about was the president of Chad. And so my Hogan invited me to his house on Saturday and he calls his brother. And the brother puts me on the phone with the president of Chad. Now I'm a 20 something year old, mind blown completely. A president of an African nation is talking to me about a dream I had where he's assassinated. But even more huh. profound, with the president talking to me, he believed me. I was the one confused because how I want to know how could he believe me? How could that possibly be true? Why has Mr. Maryland put me in such a conflicting situation? And then one Saturday morning, two weeks later, Someone knocks on my door. And I remember my wife was pregnant with our second child with the twins. And we had a one, one bedroom and one couch and a chair. So I go to the door and there's a man and he's in full African traditional dress. And I go, oh, he's at the wrong door. So let me just tell him the person he's looking for is not here. So I opened the door and I told him that you must be looking for someone else. He says, we are looking for this man, James Small. And I go, like, oh. That's me, but wh why are you looking for me? He said, we've been sent by our president to sit and talk with you. Mm. And I goes like, really? He said, yes, and I raised my head and across the street is a delegation of about 15 more people in traditional clothes, including the ambassador to the UN. And so I said, well, my wife is in bed. I have to go and get her up so she could get dressed. Then I can let you in the house. And he says, fine. So I do that, Cal gets up, gets freshened up a little bit, gets stressed. There wasn't enough chairs, so most people had to sit on the floor. And they said, tell us your dream. And I'm still baffled. You know, I'm a young, radical, political in the street, but I have no clue why they're taking a dream so serious or how this thing has gone that far. So I tell the people the dream over and over. They made me tell it three or four times. And they left and said they would be in touch. And then Mr. Ahmed got in touch. And the president asked me if I would take his youngest son, Francois, and bring him to America. He said, don't worry about 
is having a place to live that's taken care of. We only want you to get him in college and see to his education, which I did. And the, and that young man would return. I told you about him, Susan, before, because his mother, yes. after the assassination, went to Cameroon. And Francois would later join his mother in Cameroon. Um, I lost touch with them after he graduated from City. But as a reward for that dream, and I can't say certain things, but as a reward for that dream, I was introduced to an African, I don't like the word secret society, but an African brothership mm -hmm. that has been there for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And I was given the right to walk in barefoot with no shoes into that bush. And I'll leave it at that. We still have what we have. I'm not the only one in the world. There are many of us, males and females, even some who have been chosen by the spirit and don't know they've been chosen to do the work. I can attest that. That brought some clarity to that. I can attest to that. I share it. I got um, stories now. So, oh, you know. yes, you do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> um, so, um, well, you know, it's, it's, it's about time for us to, um, to, to kind of sign off, but I just wanted to get some closing remarks from you guys. Um, and, you know, we can start with you, uh, Dr. Susan Tata. You want to leave us with anything? You always have good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sister. I think um, uh, a brother or a sister just dropped a comment that is actually it. Said, now is the time for gathering. The spirit will just, you know, take over us. Yeah, that's the, the, the yeah. knowledge is supposed. So I think our presence and um, the black excellence is that gathering anywhere that we can gather. I think even the first um, assignment when I asked Professor James Moore on the first conversation on Pan-African Daily TV, what should we do? And he said, it is the time for you to build groups, start building small, small groups, because now we have to gather. And so I think our meeting in February is the gathering. We, we had the Detroit one that was digital but this one is the physical that we have to meet one another. And I think this is what we have to do everywhere that we go. Even if we are on vacationing or we are on transit anyway, try to always look at the community around you. I went to Jamaica, I made a lot of friends like in five days. And when we were coming back, my sisters were like, were you here before? Because mm. I just brought and went to the local market, talked to everybody, to the communities, to Bob Marley's hometown, to Marcos Gavis. I, I was just everywhere for the five days. And, you know, I would always be late back to eat for dinner and stuff like that. So when we, when we have that, that the spirit of anywhere you are, just gather, whether it's two or three or four or five, I think this is what we should be doing. And I think this is what I want to leave us with until we see ourselves very soon. I guess... Next week would be our turn on Pan-African Daily with Professor James, with Brother Taggy and, and the other members. So you would update us on that and we look forward. Thank you so much for being here or for me being here. And I thank everyone that has been a part and particularly those that have contributed in one way or the other through your comments, through your, your, your super chat. I only can encourage you that that's also another way of planting seed and of gathering. The more you support this work, this mission, we cannot be missionary and doing the, the monetary. It doesn't function as a family. The professors cannot be teaching and then looking again to secure their retirement or whatever. We mm -hmm. have to be conscious in the power of gathering, not just meeting people, but putting our seats together, our money. So I know anything that you contribute on happy talks in any format believe me you are gathering and you don't even have a clue what you're doing so continue to share that and we thank you so very much 
Thank you, Dr. Susan Tata. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I, I feel like royalty just sitting here with my mud, mud cloth. So I want to thank you for, for bringing that to the show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, too. I, I, I don't know why I didn't have this on earlier. It's, this feels really good. Um, thank you. Thank you. I cannot wait to see you. I know somebody was in the chat was like, they, who's getting first hugs or something? I don't know about the people. All I know is that I'm getting first hugs. <laughs> so, Ms. Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl was saying she's the first yeah. well, before Prophet would come and the audience. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, I can't wait mm -hmm. to see Cheryl. I want to, I want to hug from Cheryl too. I tell you, it's just, it's, it's just going to be a day of like a love fest, you know, because. You know, and I like how you're what you said about this professor is that these are myths. You know, it's myths that we don't get along. It's a myth that we don't, you know, uh, uh, regard each one, you know, each one um, of us. You know, so it's this is going to be really um, just a nice event for us to just really, you know, put some hands on each other, which is important. Oh, yes. Very, very important. And one, one last thing when Professor was talking about uh, what I remind people that I am an Egyptian, I always tell them, look at the history books that they chop up all the nose and look at my nose. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, uh, Queen ha Harriet Tubman. Look at all our noses mm -hmm. that we chopped off up there. And so uh, look, look at the symbols of it. So they don't need to tell us anything. We are all over the place and we shall live yeah. to be. We, we are literally the universe, mm. literally the Ashe. universe. When we Ashe. know it again, when we know it again, um, the power that is us. And so mm. on the 4th of February, we want people to buy your tickets, get on the phone tonight, get on the computer, yes. buy those tickets for February 4th. I probably got to get a couple myself for other family members um let's make sure there's no there's not even standing room there okay yes so yeah there is no standing yes. room guys this, this <laughs> is going to be such an important conference yes. because yeah. this conference is going to deal with the thoughts the dreams the ideas and principles of a dr king the thoughts and concept of a malcolm x a kwame Nkrumah, a harriet tubman a yah santiwa they didn't fight just to say i had a fight they fought for us to come back together as a family and said, we have solved the fundamental problems of economic, politics, and culture that the enemy have used to divide African people. And that mm. not one of our children will ever know poverty ever again. Yes. Because we are going to aggregate and organize the wealth that we have to build the institutions that's necessary from hospitals to schools to research labs to make sure that the hmm. places we call nations will truly be temples for the African peoples to reside in that's and not run away from. So this is not a small conference. We're not just there dealing with one organization called Happy, you know, we are from multiple organizations. I'm not mm -hmm. even a member of Happy. You know, I probably should be. But I'm not. Wait, 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 you're not a member of Happy. You know I mean, I like, I'm not a member in terms of, you know, member. I'm a member of Wadu. Okay. We don't have. I don't you know, know if we have membership. Of, like Wadu that. is the World African Diaspora Conference. I'm a member of OAU. But the well, point no, I'm making that Wadu and OAU is in full partnership mm -hmm. with Happy. Okay, yes. and Pan African Daily TV. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the Nation of Islam. It doesn't yes. matter whether you're in the Mosque of the Islamic Brotherhood. It doesn't matter whether you're in Abyssinia Baptist Church. It doesn't matter whether you are the Rasta Man Consortium or whether you are the Shrine of the Zan Tribe from Haiti in Brooklyn. That we all have the same fundamental interests. We cannot solve the problem yes. in Haiti yes unless we come together and have a clear understanding of how to use economics to solve the contradiction in Haiti and get those devils out of our country. You know, like my sister, uh, Ezra Dante called them uh, the demo rats. 
and the Republican whatever dogs out of our land. We want to make sure that Cameroon don't have another shot fire or cut the swung in a civil war between those who speak English and those who speak French. Asher. That our people can come together and understand as Cameroonians, we are Africans and mm. obligated to one another's first and obligated to our culture at home first before any other language or culture have any meaning to us. Mm. In this conference on the 4th, please get your tickets. Please be there because we will not only have the conferences where you come and listen to us, but we are all over the place talking to you, eating with you, being a part mm. of your experience. Mm-hmm. Ask us questions. Mm-hmm. Bring your yes. children with you. So those yes. Are us I wanted to here. say it. Bring the children. Yes. yes. Because let me tell you, my children are going to be there. And, and ask all the little children. I, actually, all the little young men that I look after are all going to be in the house. They're going to be working, but they're going to all be in the house, you know, um, listening because um, they essentially are growing up with you guys. Um, hmm. And I saw someone in the in the chat was asking the guests. So I, let me just kind of review that again. So Dr. Ken Harris from the National Business League, he will be the host. Um, he hosted our One Africa uh, Power and Unity Conference. We have Dr. Hmm. The lovely Dr. Susan Tata will be in the house with a special presentation. I ain't saying nothing. Y'all see it for yourselves. We're going to have Professor uh, James Small, uh, Dr. Georgina Falou. And let me tell you, Dr. Falou, um, she was so moved by the power and unity when she spoke in the conference in Detroit that she gave people her phone number over live stream and was like, here's my phone number, call me. Because she was very... Um, adamant about people leaving um, with uh, with uh, with their incorporation. She was incorporating people. She had groups of people. She had the paperwork there. She's like, this is how you incorporate. She was making everyone fill it out. So she was not playing around at Dr. Georgina Falou, who is also in the Hoppy, um, in, um, in Hoppy, uh, the documentary. And then we will have Infudishi Juhutimis, who opened up One Africa, um, Power and Unity, and we have Kaba Kapane, which was also he was on stream. He was um, streaming last time. Um, I mean, I mean, he was on Zoom at the Power and Unity. He's going to be in person. So it's just exactly what you said, Professor James Small. Because not only are we going to have you guys there, but we're having everyone that's in the area that's that was in the film is going to be in the house. So right. that's your doctor. So that's your doctor Rosalind Jeffries. That's your Asar Imhotep. They're all going to be there. You know, so we it could, because this is not this is not us up up here and everyone down here. No, this is all of us together loving on each other. So it's the sharing of ideas is, you know, it's the taking of pictures. It's the hugs, even though I'm getting my hug first, um, Cheryl and um, you guys, I'm getting my hug first. Um, but it's all of that, you know, it's it's all of that that's going to be happening. That we have and, music. And, and what. Uh... Dr. Tata brought up is so important. We don't know each other Mm -hmm. and our enemies tried to make sure we don't get to know each other. And so I'm asking brothers and sisters from the continent who live in the New York area, who lives in the US, come buy your ticket. You from Ghana, you from Nigeria, you from Chad, you from Cameroon, come. Cause I know my sister Mekel Bai, um, from Chad will be there from Ontario. And so I'm looking Please forward to seeing that go by. Um, this is um, and, and, and others will be here. So yes. that's important. Let's let's make the world see that Africans are one African. Mm. You know, mm. we're one we're one African. I have family, mm. like I said, who are Mindy on the West. I got in my genealogy Yoruba. In my genealogy, I'm out of Cameroon, okay, with the Sara. In the East, I'm Tutsi, and probably a few others. But one thing we represent in all of this moving us around through slavery and chasing us from area to area on the continent, we have amalgamated into a one African gene cluster, okay? Mm. We may speak different languages or have different cultural, symbolic practices, but genetically, we're the same person. Mm -hmm. And even our cultures is not as 
divided as you think because they're all trying to explain the same fundamental law of the universe and law of nature to be practiced in our social ecology that we built. So that is mm. a, a separation culture. That is a unity culture when we understand it. You see? So please yeah. get your ticket yeah. so I can hang out in the lobby with you and have mm -hmm. my glass of Merlot and we can kick it. <laughs> so so that's the only thing. So this, well, I'm okay, not, wait, wait. I'm not wait. no purist. I, I can't tell you I'm a full vegan. Um, most of my food is vegetarian, but a nice glass of red wine. And wait, not red wine. Wine. wait, not red wine. Wait, not red wine though, Professor. We Mirror can't have. Wine. We can't. Yeah, no, we can't have red wine in the venue. We have to have white wine. We can't have red wine. I get you oh. a nice. Yeah, I can get you a nice glass of Riesling. Um, what is it? Um, uh, Pino. I mean, I, I'm not a wine drinker, so I don't know. But I'm gonna get you something nice. Well, I'm gonna get a hotel lobby nearby where we can go have some red wine during the break. Exactly, After. bro. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. I mean, we cannot be limited to Riesling and whatever. We're gonna get another thing like out that. there. So you know, we come the, the, the palm wine and oh and I don't know what. So you guys are already but, cut But the up. thing is, we're going to gather. Susan say it's a yes, gathering. We're going to gather. And Dr. you get it. This is a gathering. And it's an You cannot gather thing. and just drink water. No, gathering. you have to bring the real thing. And you this know who we're going to invite? I'm going to, um, I forgot my sister, but I'm going to reach out and call them tomorrow. And it's the Nubian, the New York Nubian Society. Oh, yes, yeah. Nubians of Kemet yes. have their own society here yes. in New York City, and I think we yes. should invite them. Yes, but you know I'm, what? I'm going to see, see family, they already cutting up. They already mm -hmm. trying to get us kicked out, trying to bring in the red wine. See? Okay. Please, we see, won't bring in any red wine. Know. We'll have white wine only. Water. <laughs> see, we'll drink water. Is, so family, <laughs> let me tell you. I'm going to y'all, y'all, y'all. Listen, family. <laughs> Make sure you guys are in the house. Um, I just make sure because I don't know what's going to be going down. I'm pretty sure at the end of the, the night, I'm going to need a, probably a couple glasses of Merlot. Um, yes. But, you no, know, family, it is, you know, I, I, I literally just had, I remember when we were in Detroit, I had a headache. And it was, it was like a headache of like, it was so much goodness. You know, it was just, I was just overwhelmed you know, this time I am I'm making sure that I drink a plenty of water going into this event. I'm getting my mind right because I was just overwhelmed with the blackness of love. It was just so it was so much. And so I know that this this time um, it's going to be even more. And so, um, yeah, family. So when you come, so it's not only you just sitting there and looking like, OK, this is happening. You're part of it. You know, and so we've built in times for the networking, for the whole, you know, for the hugging and for all of those good things. And um, yes, Zenobia, Brand Nubian is performing. Brand Nubian is going to sing, a, um, uh, rap a couple of songs. We have J. Mar Milton. We have Lyrical Faith, who is a, a beautiful young woman poet. Um, she is going to be, um, you know, also performing. And we will, and, and you know, it, and, and we're also going to show Hoppy. We're going to show an extended clip of Hoppy and an extended clip of um, of Amadeus Christ's film. Yeah, Heavy as the Crown, Out of Darkness, Volume One. And you know, and this is the thing, okay? You're going to be there, and at some point when you're there, you may not. You may just get stuck out in the in the lobby talking to Professor James Small, drinking the Mer Merlot. And you are you may miss some other things. You might want to get the live stream ticket. And I'm just Sam, just so you can see anything you you missed. We're gonna it's gonna be live for a couple of days after, so you can always you know see anything that you you didn't quite get because you out in the hallway cutting it up with Dr. Tata and uh, Professor James Small. <laughs> so mm, um, that that nobody will take that away from us, Felicia. I can already guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's you know what? I, I it's like I know I'm gonna be the one that's in charge to tell to, to move people back into the auditorium, but I know none of y'all are gonna be moving. So I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> I know it. I, I just, I know it. I mean, I had to literally, when I tell you trying to get Dr. Georgina Falou to move from the lobby and she was, you know, she was getting ready to be on a panel. She mm -hmm. was like, I'm not going. And I was like, 
Dr. Falou, you're on this. You have to come. I had to take her purse. I had to tell people she was talking to. I was like, you guys have got to stop talking to her. Okay. <laughs> and I had to escort her. In. Okay. I was like, these little, these little elders, these little old ladies, you know, they're <laughs> real tough, you know, but, um, but yes, I'm telling you, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a nice day. And you guys go to happyfilm.com. You can get your tickets. I see someone asking about um, how do you get tickets, right there. Happyfilm.com. Um, you know, get get your ticket. It's also streaming at the bottom. Um, you know where to get your tickets at. Um, someone was asking about events. Um, events for um, MLK Day. You know, I know, Professor, you're you're always out and and doing stuff. Um, you have any suggestions or any? It, it, yeah, is anyone? You guys have no, anything? I don't wanna... have my fly at hand. I know we have um, the the NACP here in New Rochelle. We have our annual Martin Luther King Day um, history event, and then the Methodist Church down the street have the annual Martin Luther King breakfast this year. It had to be put off a couple of years because of the COVID. Um, but I'm sure it's this year. Um, I go out to, to New Rochelle. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, we be kicking it up here. Y'all think we yeah. slow. We had our annual yes. Kwanzaa event at the library a couple of weeks ago. And that yeah, was a couple fantastic. Of um, okay. so, so yeah. I think that if we look into the Amsterdam news, there's a lot of things in the media, but just online. Just, yeah. just, just, this has where the Martin Luther King Festival. Google it or events, and you will see a lot of the flyers are already posted. Yeah, um, you, can, you can go to my site, professorsmallafricanworld.com. I'm sure I'll have things posted there. Yes, and family, if you have anything that you're um, that you want the family to know, just put it in the chat because our stuff stays up there, so people can just go and refer to it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go see. I'm actually going to see a play this weekend, so I'm kind of excited about that because my my friend, who you're going to talk to, Professor Saval, on um, my, my writer friend, he got his yeah. play. He got his tickets to a really nice play, so I'm going to see a play, and then I'm, I, I might be rolling up to New Rochelle to check okay. you out. Now, yeah. I want to talk about one other lady. I really don't want to let that sister go. It's one of our great leaders because okay. she was. There was a movie uh, um, about um, the hairstylist, uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the movie. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I heard that they miscast Annie Malone. See, mm -hmm. and made her look like she was minimal. There was a lady. Her name was Annie Malone. She's born in 1869, died in 1957. She is the first black self-made millionaire in America. Mm -hmm. Madam C.J. Walker was trained by her and worked for her. She opened a college in St. Louis in, um, what's, what year is she? 1917 called Poro College. My mother, uh, was, who was a cosmetologist, attended one of her colleges um, in South Carolina. Oh, and, wow. and she, at one point, Annie Malone worked over 10,000 Black women. She pioneered door-to-door -door salesmen and created the Poro product, hair product, and cultural um, products for Black women. And yes. she was the mm -hmm. only Black um, vendor at the 1920-something World Fair in Chicago. And guess who accompanied her? Her top salesperson, Madam C.J. Walker. Wow. So history, when you get it right, you get rid of the mystery. Mm -hmm. Because what the thing about this lady she was a Booker T. Washingtonian black nationalist. Mm, mm. We don't hear much about um, mm. Annie Malone. And she built that grand institution, Poro College. Mm. Yeah. You know, so. that's, that's one of the things, like when I was, when she, when um, Dr. Uh, Wright was talking about Booker T. Washington and how, you know, that the school, Tuskegee uh, Institute, was a place where you, you learned how to be a teacher. And it was your, that was the thing you're supposed to go out and build, and build schools. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, that's yeah. Family, make sure you check out the Booker T. Washington um, um, uh, episode. Extraordinary it was lecture. Extraordinary. Yeah. I have yeah. never yeah. seen a lecture that was that intense and that.
thorough and that factual yeah. and that informational packed as the lecture yeah. Dr. Harris and Dr. Wright did on Booker T. Washington on Happy Talk. You got to yeah. watch it. I've watched it over. I saw it when it was happening and I've watched it again. I go, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? There, so where can we get in? It, it's on our, um, if you go to our YouTube page, Happy Film, uh -huh. and um, just click the one for, I think it's uh, January 5th. You'll see um, Dr. Ken Harris and um, Dr. Tyreen Wright's face. But um, I'm trying to get these two to, to work together. And they are so, I tell you, I get on a text thread with, with them just to say, you guys did a good job. 35 text me messages later. And the thing about it, when that show ended, it did not end. We got off the air, okay? And when we want, went on, we said like, it's going to be about an hour and a half. We stayed on for, I think, almost three hours, a little bit over three hours. Wow. And you thought that it ended there. It didn't end there. They stayed online talking to me until two in the morning. Listen, there. <laughs> they were, I was like, you guys have got to, we got to figure out a way to bottle this up and get this out because this information is so vital. You know, yeah. it, it is just, you know, when you start, it's, it's like these, when you hear these stories, you, you take them and you put them inside of you and it, you become a collection of these stories and you well, start to. The next day, Felicia, yeah. I was, this is my second time speaking for the Community College of Philadelphia this coming mm -hmm. February. The president of that college and African-American brothers have also written, and I forgot to name it, a definitive book on Booker T. Washington. Mm. That's right in line with Dr. Harris and Dr. Wright's uh, lecture. I'm gonna send mm -hmm. you his name. So yes. can, I'm sure Dr. Wright knows him. And I did have a conversation with Dr. Wright the other night. We did talk for a good while. Okay. And I had the honor to know and be friends with Booker T. Washington III, one of my best oh, friends, hmm. who was a member of the OAAU and lived down the street by my headquarters with his wife, Joyce, who was a principal of a school in Harlem. I got to read all of the letters between Booker T. and Garvey in his basement before he gave them to the Schomburg. And wow. the head of stories mm -hmm. of his grandfather, which was wow. just extraordinary. Wow. That's what's there up. Wow. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming on and giving us that little that little um, pep in our step. You know, we are at the halfway. We're not almost halfway. We're at uh, we have 21 days left until the event. 21 and we're going to be sold out. Y'all going to make sure that we're yeah. sold out. Yeah. There is I'm not a seat left in the space. Yeah. And family, unfortunately, after it's so we can't let nobody else in <laughs> because it's going to be packed with the vendors with um all the guests and so we would hate for you to like come and, and then you're gonna get tickets at the door and then you have to get the live stream and sit in your car and watch it it's not a good look so just get your tickets now i'm telling you just get them now um and if you don't want to come out get the live yeah. stream now you know so yep. we can be ahead of the game yep get your live stream and just be be straight it's going to be a really nice event um, and you know, Cheryl, Cheryl Lee, I, you make sure you make yourself known in there so I can see you because, um, so I can, you know, give you, give, you know, we, you need some little happy love, you know, all, all, all of our crew. It's, it's nice to see you guys. And hopefully, um, those that were in uh, power of unity, I know a lot of people are coming down from Detroit. Um, but I'm just going to urge you, I ain't saying no names, Ron Spears, to make sure you get your ticket and come through in the house be in the house because you are part of the Hoppy family. You're part of this Hoppy movement. So I want to thank you both for, um, you know, for, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Susan Tata, for staying up with us. Um, we're getting up early with us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for my beautiful mud cloth inspiration. It, 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 <laughs> okay. It fits you. Thank you. Yeah. I say good night. Good Thanks night, to everyone. Dear. Get some rest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, get some rest. Thank you. You know. Bye. It's good to see you smiling in your heart. Thank you. Yeah, smiling in your heart. All right. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, family. There it is. So listen, um, you know, um, right there is streaming uh down at the bottom. You go, it's February 4th. We have everyone is gonna be in the house. It's going to be nice, and people who are not even on the program will be will be there. 
in place to, um, you know, to, to see everybody, to greet everybody. It's going to be a nice event. Uh, family, make sure you are liking and sharing this video. And I want to thank each and every one of you that has liked this video, who commented on this video, and who have given us um, stars and who have bought, uh, you know, um, hit us up on the Cash app. Thank you. And also the Super Chats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, um, we are dispelling a myth because in Hoppy, um, the, um, he's the president of First Independence Bank, Dr. I mean, excuse me, Ken, Kenneth Kelly. He talks about how long the black dollar stays in the community. And he talks about all these other communities, you know, 30 days, 15 days, and he gets to, to black communities and he says, our money stays within our communities for six hours. That's crazy when we contribute $1.2 trillion to this economy and our money stays in our, with us for six hours. So family, when you give us your money, we, we circulate it within our own communities. Um, it's helping us put on this event February 4th. It's helping us um, maintain this happy movement. It's helping us dispel myths of, um, from other cultures. Uh, I ain't going to name the little stupid things that they're saying. But all of these things, it's, you know, your money um, goes toward, to, you know, towards us doing those things. Um, and, you know, we also, you know, wouldn't mind if you guys want to volunteer, too. That's great, too. But listen, family, if you are interested, um, you know, in having a beautiful day of Black excellence, make sure you get your ticket. Um, you can live stream it across the world. If you're in the house in, in uh, if you live in New York and you want to come through, come through, get your ticket. Listen, don't get get your tickets. Get your tickets now if you're trying to be in, in the house. And if you want to be one of the sponsors of this event, because you know how I like talking. Okay, Dr. Ken Harris like talking too. And we're going to be talking about your business. Like if you're one of our sponsors, we have a reel that'll be playing around. It's going to be on our website. We send it out to our mailing list. So, you know, listen, we know how to get the word out about other businesses. So if you are interested in sponsorship, you can also go to happyfilm.com. Um, and yes, family, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, for your support and, you know, oh, well, you know, Professor, he got off before he could say his, his little, uh, you know, his, his saying that he always says when he gets off. So I guess, I guess I'll be saying it this time, but I want to um, also just another thing, shout out to the chat, you guys. I love the love that was going on with all of you guys, um, uh, Ioka, all, all of you guys, Cheryl, and peace to um, Yoel, Michael Friend, Michael Immeltep, Adet, Sonovia, Kent Keys, P Black, D Joseph, Brian. I saw Rashamel up in the house. Thank, just thank you guys for the continued support. Denise, um, you know, Brian's always, Brian was on uh, Dr. Renoka Rashidi's webinars with me. So peace to, um, peace to you, peace to Chris, um, Ranita, all of you guys. You know, we wouldn't be able to, to do these things um, without you. So. We really, really, uh, you know, appreciate you. Um, so I think that's it. So in the words of Professor James Small, peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?